Okay, so we're going back into the Lord of the Rings online to talk about community and polis, and I'll also be giving an example from Halo later in this same segment. What I'm going to be doing is giving you instances in which the content of the games actually has something to do with the kinds of communities that we're interested in forming in our own culture that is our equivalent of the polis. So I want to introduce you to my elven minstrel, who happens to be my main. That means the character that I play most of the time and to which I devote uh, much of my energy. And his name is Elrondir. He's a minstrel, and his name means Star Pilgrim in Sindarin, the elvish language uh, invented by Tolkien. Um, he is currently level 50, which used to be the highest level one could attain, but now that the expansion Mines of Moria has come out, he's uh, 10 levels lower than the cap, and I need to work on that. At any rate, I'm going to be uh, taking him back to his home, Rivendell, which is where Elrond lives. Its elvish name is Imladris. Here I am on the outskirts of Rivendell, Elrondir's home. I don't own the house, actually. I just come from the general vicinity. I'm going to ride on in. I have a quest from Volume 2 of the Epic. It's the prologue. I've been asked by uh, the dwarf Gimli to talk to his father, Gloin, at his camp in the Misty Mountains north of Rivendell. So I'm going to head through Rivendell and into the Misty Mountains to uh, carry out this quest. What you need to understand about the epic storyline of Lord of the Rings Online is it's kind of an intersection between the action of the books and up till now, of course, just Fellowship of the Ring, the first of the three volumes of Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, where a hero like mine, Elrondir, can participate in this ongoing story that, as I'm sure you know, ends in the destruction of evil, at least for some good period of time within Middle-earth. And in case you don't know this about Tolkien's work, Tolkien meant Middle-earth to be taken as the ancient history of our own world. So when Elrondir rides up into the Misty Mountains to talk to Gloin, he is doing this as a favor to Gimli, who is a member of the Fellowship of the Ring, and Elrondir is participating in what might be called the salvific history, the salvation-giving history of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. And here I am at Gimli's father, Glowing's camp. And there is Glowing himself with a flaming ring over his head. I'll talk to him. Forward sons and fathers. And he's just said no dawdling to me. The text says, My son is not as attentive as he believes himself to be, Elrondir, if he thinks Balin may have found the ring of Thror within Khazad Dum, that's Moria. Gandalf told us the fate of Thror's ring while at the council. My son and I are dwarves, Elrondir, and we understand the call of stone and gems. In all of my people there lies a slumbering desire to see the halls of Khazad Dum alive and shining once again. It could be that Balin, son of Fundin, works there now, restoring the splendor of its ancient cities, but I do not know if that is a vain hope. There has been no word from Moria in many long years. I cannot tell my son the mind of Gandalf. You should speak with the wizard yourself, if you wish to know his plans. I believe he is in Bilbo's room on the ground floor of the house of Elrond. So my next step is to remount my horse, return to Rivendell, to carry on helping the Fellowship of the Ring prepare to take the Ring to Mordor. As I ride down out of the Misty Mountains back towards Elrond's house where I'm going to find Gandalf, 
it's worth talking a little bit about why I think this has anything to do with community in polis. And that's because what we find in the incredible appeal of The Lord of the Rings, both book and movie and now games, and this isn't the only Lord of the Rings game, um, what we find in that appeal is the way that community values are expressed. Uh, and one thing that uh, is very helpful in figuring this out is thinking about the way that Peter Jackson changed Tolkien's original a bit, as he put it, into his wonderful films. And that was to strengthen the idea of fellowship. And I don't know if you remember the wonderful speech of Aragorn from Return of the King, but he makes specific reference to the men of the West. Now, there's something a little bit sinister and even off-putting about the uh, valorization, the emphatic uh, valuation put on being from the West, because, of course, our uh, Eastern cultures are um, not to be denigrated. But I think very strongly it shows how, uh, how the values of fellowship are felt to be values of the West, the values that have come down to us in classical civilization and Renaissance civilization, and then finally to we moderns and postmoderns. Um, and I think that that's responsible for the uh, universal and continuing appeal of the works of Tolkien, and not just Tolkien, but other works, including the works of George Lucas, Star Wars, the, the kind of new mythology of the values of the West. Uh, and all of that, I think, works together to create um, what is more or less an ideology of community values, shared assumptions about what it means to be a good person, what it means to be a good person above all in a community of other good people. And so as I participate in this quest, which makes up a part of the much larger quest of the Fellowship of the Ring that comes down to us in the books of Tolkien and then the movies of Tolkien made by Peter Jackson, all of that goes together to form uh, a shared sense of community uh, between the players of this game, among the players of this game, and also uh, among them with the rest of society who don't necessarily play this game. That is, this game is, uh, plays its own role in the formation of the ideology of what it means to be uh, somebody from the West, somebody from this civilization, somebody from the great community of the civilization that began, more or less, at least in one way of looking at it, with Homer. All right, I've lost my way, and I think I'm now headed towards the place I wanted to go, which is Bilbo's room over here, where I will see Gandalf. There is Frodo, and there is Gandalf. I think Bilbo himself is in the Hall of Fire, and we need to so talk to Gandalf. What I'm trying to do in this example, in this segment, is provide a way of looking at how the content of adventure games, like this game and also like Halo, Halo 2, which I'm going to uh, use as, a, as an example in the next part of this segment, how the content of those games actually does have, I believe, a role to play in community formation, much in the way that the content of the Iliad and the Odyssey had a decisive role to play in the formation of community and polis within archaic and then classical Greece.